This is a little guide to setting up the crystallization experiment for our formal lab. You'll be provided with a plate. A crystallization plate looks like this. It's 24 wells. It's a little bit different from a tissue culture plate, which you may have seen previously. Uh, the wells are a little bit more separated, and they're just the right size to allow these cover slips to sit over top of each of the wells, which are important because that's where we're going to be performing our crystallization. Now, the first thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be assembling uh, once you've finished determining the concentration of your lysozyme and adding the correct buffers, you're going to be assembling your precipitant solutions. So each well that you're going to be using will have a precipitant, be it uh, sodium, azide, or, so pardon me, sodium iodide, sodium chloride, or sodium bromide, and you'll be using a buffer solution of pHs either from 4 to 5.5. You'll be mixing that in the wells. Once you've done that, you'll of course have added a buffer solution to your uh, to your lysozyme in correct quantities and ratios, you prepare your drop on top of a cover slip. Now the cover slips come in those little cardboard boxes and they're separated by these little white papers. Um, these papers keep the cover slips from scratching each other and keep them clean. Here's a little hint. Take the papers off of the cover slips and away from the cover slips before you start using them. What I've discovered is there's enough static electricity built up with the paper. If you put a drop together in the center of the cover slip and then pull the paper off from underneath it in the hopes that that will have somehow kept it cleaner, the static electricity will actually pull the drop and spread it all over your cover slip. So what you're going to end up doing, probably the easiest place to assemble your drops is on top of the tray. You will pipette your lysozyme solution. You can then pipette some of the precipitant solution, the equal volume, four microliters each, to create a drop in the middle of your cover slip. Now this is the bit that's a little bit trickier. We have to seal each of the wells to allow the vapor exchange to happen uninterrupted and so that the experiment doesn't actually dry out. Um, I provided with very small syringes that have uh, petroleum jelly and or vacuum grease mixture. All you have to do is basically put a ring of vacuum grease around the well. You then take your cover slip, flip it upside down, place it on top of the well, and apply a little pressure to make sure you've got a seal. And you can actually see whether you've sealed it correctly or not. Now if you're doing an individual well, it's actually fairly easy. Just apply a little pressure to your syringe. You should put what's called a bead of petroleum jelly around the outside. Set that aside. Your drop on top of your cover slip will actually be fairly stable. It won't come off. You can turn it upside down fairly uh, readily without it actually falling off. Simply drop it on top of the appropriate well, apply a little pressure, and you can see through the cover slip whether it's sealed all the way around. And then leave that undisturbed for, for, uh, for at least 24 hours, waiting for crystal development. If you have a whole bunch of wells to do, what I found is instead of going around each one separately, it is sometimes easier just to do this kind of serpentine pattern and then do that back. But whatever pattern you decide works out best, that's how you're going to set up your experiment. The second part of the crystallization experiment is basically going to be taking images of your crystals. Now, by looking directly at the cover slips, you can sometimes see whether there are small crystals that have formed, but it's a lot easier to do, and it's a lot more uh, certain that they're protein crystals if you've done your methylene blue. But do you want to take all 24 of your cover slips off, add methylene blue, and wait? Some of these will not have any crystals in them at all. Um, so what we're going to do is basically do a survey of our cover slips using the handheld USB powered microscopes that I've provided for you. Now if you have a look on the microscope you've got it lists from a 10 times to 150 times magnification. I'm doubtful that it's actually 150 times but you know they, they advertise it as such. If you rotate this dial down towards the 10 times magnification, maybe not quite all the way, and have a look at the screen, um, this should be set up you can actually run this along and check out drop by drop at a reasonably low magnification and identify which cover slips have potential protein crystals in them. So I would recommend doing this first. It's a big time saver actually. At this point it's maybe not necessary to actually take pictures of the various crystals because they're at fairly low magnification and you have not yet verified whether they are actually protein crystals at this point. But you can certainly survey along and this way you don't even have to take the lid off. It's very safe for your crystals which wells contain potential protein crystals. When you've determined which wells have potential protein crystals, let's say it's this well, is the, the most promising one. You then, setting your microscope aside, 
you can, with a pair of forceps or with your fingers, carefully remove the cover slip. It will still have a bead of petroleum jelly or vacuum grease on it. At this point, you can add in the methylene blue. Now within, let's say about five to 10 minutes, you should be able to notice that the protein crystal will begin to suck the methylene blue out of the solution <clears throat> and incorporate it into its structure. At this point, you go back to your microscopy. Now, if at this point in time, you rotate the magnification up towards the higher end of the magnification, maybe again, not quite all the way, and then without replacing the cover slip on your well, and this does get a little gooey because of course there's the petroleum jelly on your cover slip, you simply place and it will be lit up when it's actually hidden in the USB port. Place the microscope over top of the cover slip. The field of view is large enough that you should be able to see most of your drop at this point. If you have a blue well-formed crystal in there, go ahead and take a picture. If you have any kind of blue crystals, in fact, take a picture. Now, be careful at this point, because of course you've got the petroleum jelly, it may actually contact the microscope. When you lift it up, your cover slip may come with it. So you want to be a little bit careful not to spread that around and not to flip your cover slip off and lose your crystals. At this point, if you feel you want to take pictures of this particular crystal again, after giving it some more time to grow, and some of the crystals will grow after addition of methylene blue, you can simply replace the cover slip on the appropriate well, give it a little push to make sure that it's sealed properly. Repeat that procedure for any uh, cover slips that you feel have uh, protein crystals on them, and then you can set this aside and take pictures again at a second point. Maybe your crystals will have grown more.